this is in boot camp episode 24 mail server on saturday june 29th 2019 with your hosts matthew petchel and ryan rampersad you can find the show notes for this episode at the nexus.tv slash ib24 hey hey how's it going today it's going well how about you ah it's kind of hot out there but i'm doing fine yeah it's pretty sweltering pretty humid pretty bad it's a whopping 77 degrees here in the studio though so it is uh not actually horrible down here that is actually a pretty good temperature yep sure is it's almost like you're in a basement it's almost like i'm in a basement and i may well be yeah so how is class this week really winding down very few people actually showing up for class and um it's just it it feels like everyone's already checked out already checked out huh so now let's uh let's go over some statistics here according to my records it is week 24 of your boot camp correct can you confirm or deny uh confirmed confirmed okay so do you have one more week after this is that is that right two more weeks two more weeks so you end at 26 weeks i end at 26 weeks it's like not we've done all coursework it's just group project stuff now okay so you've got a couple more weeks left and uh it's pretty wound down so you last episode we were talking about your computer science stuff and we'll talk some more about that because there was a little bit more to it than uh, just sorting algorithms which is good but we also have some uh follow-up for the first time ever i believe uh, so that's that's a rare and uh, momentous occasion at the end of our series. Yes, we're practically done with the show, but we have uh, feedback. Yeah, so uh, Brandon, uh, he has follow-up for us, which is um, folks ask him about the U of M boot camp and its quality, and he's often said, not sure, it's a boot camp, have fun. But uh, since Matt gave some really critical thinking feedback... Uh, a few episodes ago in episode 22 he may not be saying that in the future well it's so, uh, yeah so it's what do you think about to start that? i mean it's i mean it's a, just a boot camp it's because he went through the whole computer science program at the u correct or he went to morris or no he went to the u of m however his actual major is in journalism and he did part of the um computer science curriculum oh wow that's cool. And I think Brandon would say that in his experience, actually practicing writing code and doing things himself was far more beneficial than the actual coursework that he experienced while at the U. Yeah, but you should say something similar, I bet. Oh, yeah, you bet I would. Before you even started your thing, you had already made avatar scrapers and fluff grabbers and you knew everything about every project already uh we'll talk about that a different time but but um in short yes yeah uh and he also had a follow-up on the java section which was java wow java sucks yep and uh i hear a lot of people say that yeah that that's just because uh brandon is a little bit frustrated with uh some of the android java that he's had to write for mobile apps in the recent months yeah yeah, so uh, that was follow-up. Thanks for the follow-up, Brandon. Uh, let's talk about the computer science stuff now. Yeah, so we went over sorting algorithms a little bit last week, and we just had one more follow-up course because of all the holidays and stuff and classes being canceled. Um, we're off schedule, and so... If they had to... At the start of the year, everything was blocked off in week increments, like everything was doing this week, then this week, and now it's all kind of clustered together. But we finally went over Big O Notation on Tuesday. And we talked about time and complexity and everything and how don't use loops, pretty much. And then he's like, okay, you all go work in your group work now. So literally, that's all I got to say, because literally there was like a few slides, there was 108 slides that he just spammed through as fast as possible. The big annotation stuff is really interesting because you can get into some pretty interesting algorithm, uh, I don't know, thinking when you start analyzing big annotation. Uh, when you analyze for the complexity or um, memory usage, the space complexity of something, you know, things can get pretty interesting. We never touched anything about uh, memory usage. It was just time. All we talked about was yeah. time. Well, uh, as you know, space and time are connected, and 
it does make sense that if if they're related, then you will encounter the other at some point. Um, and we talked about that uh, ourselves. You know, you were asking, so like, what what's a case where memory might come into play? And we we talked about that extensively last episode as well. So uh, I think it's kind of a bummer though that you didn't talk about it longer. But on the other hand, and I I did say this last time too, in some ways it's more important to me that you skip some of the computer science stuff because it doesn't have an immediate relevancy to anything you're doing. Whereas actually writing code for group project work could, of course, if you're not writing any code anyway, it doesn't matter. Back when I was a junior in high school, though, I took a computer science class at my high school. And I mean, we talked, that was AP computer science, by the way, AP computer science. And we, we did the sorting algorithms and everything too. And then we started talking about, we, we, we didn't do a whole lot with it, but we talked about what a stack was, what a queue was and arrays and everything else. We actually talked about data structures and stuff. And we, I mean, I almost feel like my high school class covered more. I mean, we, we definitely covered more topics and I think we actually went a little more in detail because we actually made at the end of the day, we, we made each of the sorting algorithms in Java. And yeah, and you know what's interesting about that? Like, computer science class at, at in our high school was about an hour a day for, you know, every day. Uh, and so if, if you think about it, two weeks of instruction time in computer science at, in high school, um, you know, that's that's roughly 10 hours. Whereas, allegedly, your boot camp dedicated 10 hours, in quotes, to this instruction time for Java. So, you know, roughly... Uh, they're quite different. And th- th- there was a supplemental reading that got slacked out. It was a blog post for something because uh, they did say that when you go to a job interview, they love to ask questions about, you know, sorting algorithms and other things. And they also love to ask you big O questions and stuff. So, I mean, it's something you should know for that one reason. But I went on Udemy and I did find a course that is taught by a boot camp instructor that basically says hey this is all the stuff that we really should we left out of our boot camp but you might want to know um and that that's that's an amazing instructor that's very clever i think that's a great idea one thing i love about finding so anyone can make a udemy course and stuff but this guy is a boot camp instructor he is familiar with teaching and sometimes when i see these udemy courses because there's somebody who knows a ton of about their field and a, a lot about their library like nestjs thing or something they really like but if they don't speak into the microphone and they don't, I'm sure you've listened to dead lectures, like things that are just impossible to st- pay attention to. Um, this guy is full of energy and it's 20 some hours, so it's going to take me a little while to get through. I, I, I will look forward to hearing more about what you find out um, and what you find interesting from that material. Uh, I I wish there had been more practicality embedded in my algorithms and data structures coursework um following along with sorting algorithms and following along with um you know recurrent relations and recursive functions and you know recursive data structures you know it's all very interesting but it's not necessarily practical unless you're given a reason for it to be and sometimes in computer science uh courses uh, the reason for things are omitted because there might not actually be any practical reasons for things. Still, I'm interested. I want to know. So I am going to continue with the Udemy class. Excellent. So well, what else are you working on these days? Yeah, uh, so I tried to do a bunch of work. Um, so this week, one of the cool things we we're going to do is we wanted to send emails. So we, we bought a domain for our final project, and we wanted to send emails from support at amass.us. And it was going to be cool. It was going to be awesome. It was going to verify emails, email you of upcoming events. And this is just so cool. We found so much code on GitHub about using this. Because uh, you, you, I mean, you're familiar with, with um, this grid SVG or said that wrong. Um, I'm not doing that part of it. I said that way wrong. But there are just so many different things out there. Um, and it all boils down to, do we have a working mail server? And I'm like, you guys, I'm super hacker. I got this. I got this. And so for uh, two class periods now, I've been trying to get it to work. Um, so I heard that MailChimp was this wonderful thing, beautiful UI. 
you could set it up real easily. Uh, within a half hour, I was sending test emails and sending all the stuff I wanted to do because you can make like a like, hey, you, you just signed up for our email list. And so I was like, OK, well, blah, blah, blah. Thank you for joining our email list. This is our work in progress app. If you have any feedback, send all questions to blah, blah, blah. And it was cool. But it all came from my Gmail account. And to actually do that, you have to have a working web server. Which went right back to trying to get it to work. And yeah, I'm actually kind of struggling with it a little bit. Yeah, so what what kind of mail server are you trying to set up here? Well, I found a guide on actual Linode. Um, oh, uses Postfix and installed everything, trying to get it to configure. And turns out I couldn't read the instructions right, and I confused my domain name with host name. That so I uh, I read the instructions also after you sent me a link earlier today. And wow, those instructions were not meant to be as confusing as they turned out to be. Man, were they confusing. Um, so are you familiar with the idea of a host name? I mean, that's to me, host name is just kind of like where you're serving your files, like like your local host, your other things. Like I, that's all I know about. So when you when you when you're sitting at your computer right there. What is your computer's name? Like to the network or just what I named it when I turned it on or Sure. Uh I I as always I did Matt Desktop. Cool. So my host name for my server computer in the other room is server 3. That's the name of the computer but also its network host name. And so the host name is the name that other servers on its local network can see. Okay. So you can kind of think of it as an internal domain name. So it's not using DNS necessarily. It's just an internal name that the computer sends to others on the network. And then a domain name, on the other hand, is something that the external internet uses to get to your host, to your server, to its IP address. And uh, it's kind of a bummer that that's not explained in that guide because it's kind of important. And... When when you run these commands and stuff, you I mean you're literally manually editing uh, SQL databases. Yeah, and you're also like touching a dozen config files here and there, and it's just it's pretty crazy. Yeah, yeah. So and uh, am I... what did I tell you about <laughs> these mail servers before you started? You said that get ready for hours and hours and hours of agony, and if I get stuck to message somebody he said to yep. go bug somebody but more importantly he said don't bug me because <laughs> yeah, i don't know mail I, have, servers, I have i have no idea and i don't care because it's a waste of time yeah. i have had this vps for about 10 years now that's not true that's not time works but if i had i still would not have figured it out so and i, I messaged on slack that hey um we might just end up you know, making like a contact form and other things. Like we, we, we don't, this isn't um, part, like this is our, our group project. It would be a nice to have. And I think it'll be spectacular if we pulled it off, but we're going to go forward with other core functionality first. And then if time go back to it, because we need to have something to show on the 11th. Yeah. And so what I would have said all along is always do core functionality first and don't even bother investigating bonus material until after it's all done. So you know, whatever. On our group project, the way we divvied stuff up, we kind of assigned me to deployment and figuring out the other stuff, and then the other people would handle the coding part for the first little round of this. Well, so it was my I job to do a feasibility us... analysis of whether or not we could actually do this. So I, I know that you love your feasibility analysis kind of work. However, that's not actual work. That's pretend work. Yeah. Um, so I, uh, I w- back to what I was yeah. saying, I try to get a lot of work done. <laughs> yeah. So that does bring us to your group project three overall. So the mail server is an aspect of it, and as you just said, it's kind of a bonus. Uh, well, so tell we moved me how it to bonus re- category now. Oh, okay. Uh, so so rescoping, right? So tell me about the overall progress of the project. Uh, um, 
absolutely in every single way no measurable progress at all so i believe uh in showtime we have been here uh on group project three for about three episodes now that's about three weeks uh, from this week to last week no measurable progress has been made so it's not going so well um i'm gonna go rogue tomorrow um gonna go rogue um so what what has been done other than the server stuff well, there's been uh, about zero front-end work, uh, zero logo work, and uh, branding work. Um, there's been a custom-tailored ORM for a SQL database, which we are wiping and not going to use. And there was a function that lets you pick dates in jQuery on little calendar thing, which we're not going to use. Sounds not great. At least that's what it sounds like. Yes. So are are you happy with this or not so happy with this? And so like, what what's your plan? My plan is that I'm going to become front end and back end. And I'm just going to start going to town on it. And just in, in my book, they've lost their say. Uh, we kind of divided our, our group of four into two teams. Um, and I'm reassigning myself i see uh, this is, so on july 11th my mom and dad are coming they're going to come to graduation night and final presentation night i don't want this to suck um i mean if it was just because no, no matter what you do like i've already passed the boot camp like i it, this could be the worst project of the world and i would still get my certificate at the end I need I need this to show off, and I want to show off more importantly to my mom and dad. Right. So I think it's 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 a lot of um, a lot of work that you have ahead of you. Thirteen days. I have thirteen days to get this done. And so, like, I would expect roughly the amount of work that you have to do is about forty hours worth of work. That's 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 five full working days at eight hours a day in thirteen days. That's that's my estimate for the work that you need to do to make what you want to make. Yeah. And I'm not counting on any of that helping from the group members. I'm not either. Because I just, I'm disappointed. Yeah, group work is always very mediocre, uh, especially, in my opinion, when the work being done is left up to the team to choose rather than being prescribed. Uh, I think it would be much more interesting uh, if that was not the case. So uh, we have one more thing to briefly discuss. Oh, and do we really have to discuss it? <sighs> yeah, we do. Because you see, on the last episode of In Boot Camp, number 23, uh, we discussed at the end of the episode a certain Matthew Petchel attending a certain legendary recruiting event named Hacker X in downtown Minneapolis. Uh, and I would like to request that you tell me, how did that go? Oh, pretty good. I got one follow-up, and I also got a lead from another person who got a lead from another person. So, you know, second-hand lead. Uh, so, yeah, it went pretty good. Is that right? Yeah, you see, when you sign up for this Hacker X, of, uh, Hacker X event, your name gets on a list of recruiters who sent me an email saying, Hey, uh, I would just like you uh, to reach out again to you and to invite you to come check us out something or other so i got one follow-up email to an event i didn't go to and then somebody who went to the event told me about this united health group and one of their intern programs yes so in other words you didn't go i didn't go okay so i wanted to get that out of the way uh so would you like to provide excuse zero through four to elaborate on why you did not attend excuse number zero I was unable to get the day off. Excuse number one. It was hot out. Excuse number three. I have no more. I can miss like one more class. Uh, I've had some attendance problems. And you think, well, Matt, just get to class. No, I've been at class and forgot to mark myself present or something is happening. Because you have to check in remotely. And I've also had, like, I've been in class and been marked absent twice. And I've actually been absent once. 
That sounds pretty suspicious. Yeah. And yeah, so between having work, not wanting to drive over there right at the end of the day, and being really tired because of the hot day, um, I just chilled at home and went to class, which was, was the big class- old notation day, which was literally a, a, a PowerPoint slide that I could have looked at and then group project work in class. So one of my classmates, I told him, hey, you should go. And he actually ended up going. And he actually did end up speaking with you and everything else. More importantly, he talked to United Health Group. And they have a technological development program. And it sounds like something I am very interested into. And you can talk to a recruiter two hours a week on actually four hours a week, two hours on Tuesday and two hours on Thursdays between two and four. And I'm going to be taking my lunch at about 2.30 on Thursday so I can talk to one of these recruiters and find out what's what. That's cool. Uh, Some of my friends from the U of M when I was graduating uh, did work at Optum. And at the time they had a 18 month rotation program where you would get, you know, one department, you'd work there for so many months, six or seven months. And you get rotated to another department, work there for six or seven months, like we're rotated again. And then at the end of that, you kind of become like a first class employee or something. I'm not sure if you, I think you were always an employee the whole time, but like you would actually be able to choose what you did at that point after the last rotation. Um, And, uh, you know, some people like it, some people don't, but, you know, it's a place to work for sure. And after I reach out to recruiter, hopefully they actually take my call and hopefully something comes out of it. But that is the pretty much the one lead that was good that was handed to me for actually not going to the event. Yeah. So uh, I I I think it'd be interesting because I haven't personally researched it. I I wonder uh, if there are any like boot camp job fairs in the area or um, like entry level worker recruit recruiting events because um, that'd be interesting to find out more about. Yeah. And. The University of Minnesota has one, um, which I'm going to talk to. I guess somebody else took over. Um, it's, there's rotation. There's rotation in every position at the University of Minnesota. i finding that out. Uh, so I'm going to reach out to this new person because earlier I did not like the little milestones and things I was doing. But turns out you don't actually have to do any of that to be allowed to do that. So up until 90 days after you graduate, you can reach out and ask for help finding a placement. Yeah. And and as soon as possible, you should start asking for lots of help. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so part of the bootcamp curriculum were these career milestones where you'd do these little exercises, fill them out, and then somebody would get back to you. That wasn't the case. Then all of a sudden, a lot of them got back to, and there were weird answers. It it was just a weird, weird thing. So I don't know anyone who continued to do it through the boot camp. Yeah, that that totally makes sense. But, if it's if it's not useful, it's not worth doing. It's like, but uh, yeah. you should definitely try to leverage whatever they have. Because the way I see it, I've already paid for it with my tuition. Like I see it that way too. I mean, I would be leaving money on the table if I didn't take them for all they had. That's how money works. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah. Hey, where can we find you on the internet? And of course, you can find me just about everywhere, but especially on the Twitter at Ryan Amar, and of course on my website, ryanrampersad.com. Uh, where can we find you on the internet? You can find me on matthewpetrol.com. You can also find me on the People's tab of the Nexus.tv. And we are now accepting donations for sure SM7B cardioidynamic microphones. So if you had an extra one, please donate it to us. Yes, and of course, you can follow us on Reddit at reddit.com slash r slash the Nexus TV, and you can leave us commentary and feedback. Of course, only one person has ever done that, so... Thank you. So that's a really, really long-running record. And of course, you can support us at patreon.com slash the Nexus TV, and you can support us and uh, donate microphones if you would like to. We're looking for two donations. Right. Have a good one. The Nexus, the Nexus, the Nexus TV podcasts from, from the, the technological, technological convergence. convergence.